We're now recording. Okay. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Good to see you, man. Um, you're. That's my mom. <laughs> That's my mom. Okay. Hey, mom. I'm just doing an interview on uh, on Zoom. Can I give you a call back? It's a lovely fellow called Ruf Rufus Wainwright. I'll tell you all about him. Love you. Bye bye. Is she, is she in England? My mom's 86 and she's on wow. lock, lockdown in England. Okay, okay. Well, that's, that's, that's good. She's doing okay. She's doing okay. okay. Wonderful, wonderful. So, so you're in Laurel Canyon? I am, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I'm sort of the base of Laurel Canyon. We're, we're not out in the hills. We're, we're, we're not far from Sunset Boulevard. But yes, I, I can see Laurel Canyon from my window. <laughs> the hills. How are you doing? Um, I'm okay. You know, I, I, I'm just very grateful at the moment because I have, uh, you know, I, we're, we're all in good health. California is a great place to be in this whole, uh, pandemic. Um, also, um, I, you know, I, 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 I didn't get to spend much time with my daughter before, um, cause I was touring so much. So we've gotten a lot of time together, which has been fantastic. Um, and I don't know, I think it's gonna get worse before it's gonna get better. <laughs> so I figure enjoy, you know, be as positive as you can for as long as you can, because I think it's gonna get pretty tough uh, when did, economically. When did you get locked, uh, locked in yourself? When did you quarantine yourself? How far into this? Uh, well, we, you know, when it was announced, uh, I guess what, mid-March? Right. Uh, so around mid-March, and uh, I, think, I feel like it was the 15th or something. around then so uh or something like that uh but yeah so it's been you know it's been about 45 days or so <laughs> i've lost track i mean you know, I know I, yeah I, i'm fortunate that i'm i'm doing a morning radio show so i have something to do every morning yeah and yeah. and i'm really grateful for that um yeah, yeah because you know it means i have to get up i have to do something yeah. i have a, a responsibility yeah, yeah. Um, every day but otherwise i don't i don't know how i would do yeah it. yeah no i don't know yeah i mean one of the interesting kind of uh vignettes that occurred is, is that you know our, our daughter viva she she's quite a, she became obsessed with that movie groundhog day which uh, i had never seen and so oh my early, gosh so early on in the in the in the quarantine when we had her she said one of the movie nights was groundhog day and of course like I can't stop thinking about that movie. <laughs> yeah, because it, it, it kind of feels like we're living it, right? Morning. Yeah, every morning it's the same feeling. But anyways, you've been you've been performing though, right? You've been doing these quarantunes. Is that is that right? Yeah. Yes, that's right. Yeah, no, I I was fortunate actually. Uh, you know, I, I I every morning I I get up regardless. I, I have for years and play piano uh, and in my bathrobe and it's my thing and um and my husband Jorn uh started uh filming them sporadically uh mostly to scare me <laughs> you know i'd be kind of enraptured by this section of music and and the next thing you know the phone's up up in my nose and 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 and, and whatever so and he started posting those occasionally uh the robe recitals you would call them and then once the pandemic struck um it just made sense immediately to, you know, institute that as a regular thing and to really, you know, do a song a day. And it's become, you know, we're on day 46, I think, and I've done a different Rufus song every day. So uh, all, of, all of which, you know, mean something to someone, um, you know, they're songs that I sing. So it's, if anything, it's been a nice sort of, you know, testament to, you know, my prolific nature. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, it gives you something to do, though, as well, obviously, yeah, like, because you've got to you, you gotta show up, right? Yes, yes, yes. What, what other things have you been doing um, on, on a daily basis to give yourself yeah. some kind of yeah. schedule? Yeah, well, it's interesting, because I, I don't know if you see my background, but there's this, my daughter put this drawing behind, this is a drawing that I did, um, and I'm doing um, a lot of drawings now for, for my album. Uh, each for each song, I'm, I'm I'm doing an illustration. So I've actually been drawing a lot, which is nice. Um, and 
And then also, uh, I, you know, I work as well in the classical world. And I have several commissions uh, that I can now really focus on quite intensely, <laughs> um, which are, you know, rather dark uh, in terms of subject matter. I mean, I can't go too into it, but uh, there's one piece that I, that I have to deliver for Greece uh, in a couple of years, um, you know, because everything's very far ahead in that world. Um, but it's, it's, it has an apocalyptic theme. And, uh, and so this is a perfect time to kind of, you know, submerge myself in, uh, in, in, in writing, you know, string parts and stuff. So it's, so the classical world is actually, it's a good, you know, they, they love periods like this uh, of isolation. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, loneliness <laughs> and destitution. <laughs> Talk about Greek tragedies and, and, and whatnot. Yeah. How, yeah. Is, how is what's going on um, affected the way you're writing, whether it's right. classical or pop? Yeah. Well, I've written one song uh, so far, which really addresses the pandemic. I mean, it's not, it's not about it per se. But I, you know, I talk about being in, it's like the first line is, you know, day 17 of quarantine. So, so, uh, so it, it, it references it. Um, and it's, uh, it's a lament. <laughs> and uh, it, it's, it's actually about Easter. Uh, uh, so um, it's called Happy Easter. And I don't know, it's, uh, I, I, I think I think the one aspect that that is perhaps you know most affecting and 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 that is you know but but not necessarily you know at the front of one's mind but 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 nonetheless always there is the fact that you know I don't know when I'm going to see my dad again you know I mean I will see him he'll be fine or my aunts or my you know older people in my life who you know can really be um can be gone in a second with this with this situation um not let alone you know people my age i mean we're not out of the wood either woods either but but definitely you know i'm i'm more cognizant of uh of the fact that uh that 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 uh you know you never know this could be this could be the last time you talk to some of these people uh if things get any worse so so that's tough um and i do think that there's some of that desperation is 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 translating into uh, into the work um but uh yeah so i'm not one to keep it light <laughs> is is your dad locked down safely somewhere yeah he's out in shelter island long island uh with his girlfriend and uh he's quite enjoying this i think um he's always been sort of an isolationist reg regardless um um so, so he's okay. Uh, my sister, I, I think I really, the heart, I mean, I, I, my sister Lucy Wainwright Roach, who's a great singer, and her mom, Suzy Roach, I think they're pretty down in terms of being in, the, in Manhattan and just, you know, being in that environment. And um, I worry about them sometimes because they're really, they, you know, anyone who's in Manhattan is really on the front lines. So, so, so yeah, they're, they're in the thick of it at the moment. Gratitude goes a long way. I know, I know from, oh, my own, yes. from, from my own experience. And, and my apologies, somebody's like leaf blowing outside my house right now, if you can hear Oh, it. I, I don't hear it. But, <laughs> but you know, from, from my own experience, um, you've got to find the gratitude somewhere because if you get sort of too locked into the fear, yeah. then, you know, who's going to get out of bed, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, definitely. No, gratitude is... You know, I had an amazing experience, and this is way before the before the uh, the pandemic. But 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 nonetheless, it, 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 it's something that re resonated with me. Where you know, after my mother died, uh, Kate McGarrigal, I I was obviously you know uh, very very destroyed and and distraught and so forth. But but I went to uh, I had to light her a candle at a certain point because I had done that all during her illness and and. Um, Anyways, and, and, and I was in France, in Paris, and I went to, and this is before the fire in Notre Dame, but I, I, I went to Notre Dame to light this candle for her. And, uh, and it was, you know, an incredibly beautiful day there and, and, a, and a very dramatic, like it was, there was tons of people and, and, and incense wafting. And it was a beautiful experience. Anyways, and, 
And I really made this decision. I'm not a religious person uh, per se, but I made this decision to really pray, <laughs> you know, and to really ask for guidance, you know, from, 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 from the, the, the heavens in the church. And, and, I, and I did that and I walked around the, the, the cathedral. And as I walked out, there was an amazing, I had this incredible experience where just this message would just hit me up, upside the back of my head so strongly. And, and it was some other force telling me this. And it said, Rufus, the only way you can get through anything in life is to be grateful. Like you have to be grateful at all times. And, uh, and it's a message, you know, thankfully I got it there and I've gotten it in other places too, but, but it's, but now especially it's, it's come in handy. Gratitude. Somebody told me once that you can buy a, you can buy a God with gratitude. You can buy a higher yeah. power with gratitude. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, definitely. And, uh, and so, yeah, that's the way to go. Let me ask you about um, the music that's waiting to be released, I guess, now. The album has been pushed yes. back a, a little bit. Um, you know, we heard the, the first single, and I was fascinated by it because um, it was really about your introduction to Joni Mitchell, correct? Yeah, this yes. Remarkably, somebody whose work you weren't really that familiar with. Tell, yes. tell us a little yes. bit about di discovering Joni Mitchell. I actually spent... Yeah a marvelous day with Joni Mitchell about 10 years ago that I'll share with yeah. you briefly, but yeah, tell me a little yeah. bit about how you discovered her music and then. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, this, uh, this pertains to my mother again, Kate McGarrigal, who, you know, her in her own right was a, was a, was a great musician and songwriter and, you know, classic Canadian. Um, but anyways, but she was, she was in this um, very, how should I say this? Very, um, traditional and very uh brutal uh folk kind of world uh, uh you know she was a real purist my mother and uh and she adored you know th they really followed kind of pete seeger and 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 you know and art and, and woody guthrie and you know this kind of sensibility and, and early dylan and stuff though she loved dylan when he when he went electric too but anyways she wasn't a fool and uh <laughs> and uh anyways but but in in that world Joni mitchell was kind of a heretic you know um she was considered a kind of a sellout and and also you know someone who was maybe just too uppity you know for her own good and uh and, and so 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 there was no so Joni Mitchell was not allowed to be played in, in, in our house um I think also to be to be fair um my mother was very jealous as well <laughs> of her success and her the attention that she got and uh so it was a double-edged sword I I understand I I, I prize my mother's you know heavy duty attitude but also she was jealous so i never heard her music <laughs> and then uh and then years later um my husband yorn vice uh was we were living in toronto and it was it was johnny's 70th birthday and they the, the, he was working at, at a fest he, he had a festival there and the festival people said, you know, you should really do a, a, a birthday celebration for Joni Mitchell. And he didn't know her either, having grown up in, in Germany. Um, and then he discovered her music and he became like this crazy fan, which, I mean, I, I to this day, I love her work, but I'm not like the crazy Joni Mitchell fan that certain people become. And he went into, the, he totally fell into that, that, tr that, that, that world. And I joined him. And on that journey and it was wonderful because I really you know saw her through his eyes and we subsequently became good friends with her and uh and that party that actually that that 70th birthday was an amazing event because it was the first time she she went on stage for I, I guess 12 years in Toronto and um anyway so we became friends so I so I, I really got into her work and then I ended up singing a lot of it and then when we moved here and I, it came time to make the record. Um, I, I had written that song, uh, Damsel in Distress, um, which uh, we released. And, and it was really my sister, Martha Wainwright, who, uh, who just turned to me at one point and said, you know, Rufus, you, that's a Joni Mitchell song. <laughs> you just wrote a Joni Mitchell song. Uh, and not, not like I ripped her off, but it's, though there's a little section that's a bit of a rip off. And, uh, 
the opening section, but um, or the middle section, but but nonetheless, it's 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 an homage to her in a lot of ways. I, I'll just share with you very quickly. I had a, a remarkable day about ten years ago. I was um, writing for the Los Angeles Times Magazine. I don't remember we used to have a magazine and the Sunday paper. Yes, yes, and, yes. And uh, they they had me curate a um, uh, uh, an issue, a music issue. And one of the things that I was trying to set up was for Beck right. to, inter to interview Joni Mitchell. Wow. Yeah. And, and my job uh, was to facilitate it and then go to the hotel, uh, some hotel in, in, in Westwood where you could smoke because right, it's right, Joni, right? right? Uh, and to meet them there and facilitate it. That was it. And then I, I, on my way there that morning, I'd just come back from somewhere glorious like Amsterdam and I'm driving there in a cab and I find out that Beck is ill and can't make it. Oh boy. And I have to go in and, and <laughs> see Joni, uh, who's having a cup of tea with, with her assistant, and say, I'm terribly sorry after you've spent all this time here, you know, getting here and setting this up, but Beck isn't gonna be here. Are you okay if I do the interview? And I was yeah. shitting myself that she was yeah, yeah, yeah. upset yeah. and pissed. And she was like, no, that'll be fine. And we spent <laughs> a glorious afternoon together wow. talking wow. about um, ballet at the time because she, yes. she got her, her she was ballet. working with the, Winni with the Winnipeg ballet, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. And, and I found her to be delightful. And again, yeah. a lesson learned of, you know, sometimes people will tell you things. In particular, I find this with women, successful women. People will tell you, oh, she's, she's tough yeah. or she's a bitch yeah. or whatever. And yeah. then, yeah, yeah. You meet the person for yourself, and it's a completely different experience. Yeah, no, totally, totally. I mean, for me, it's I, I, you know, I, I, we've had a few afternoons with her, you know, certainly before all of this happened, the pandemic, and and yeah, no, one of my one of them especially, I, I remember going, and I was just in a really depressive mood. I was very sad and very. It was around when there was a lot of fires in L.A., and it was kind of it was just really scary <laughs> being here, and. Uh, and anyways, but we went to see Joni one afternoon and I was shocked at how much just her, her aura uh, affected me that day for some reason. Just exactly. like all of my sadness, all of my frustration kind of lifted uh, instantly. And, and we just had a wonderful afternoon and talked about music and, and you know, koi fish or whatever, you know, it's <laughs> like whatever. It was, but it was, yeah, no, she has, she's a, she's a living, she is a, I, I always hate to use the word goddess, but 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 there's something holy about her for sure. Absolutely, I agree. What what about the other songs on on the record? How many how many songs are going to be on this album? Well, there's twelve. Uh, I think there's twelve. Uh, uh, and uh, you know, they're all the the way. What, what's nice about this record is that we've because you know vinyl has become central again. Uh, which is a wonderful thing. Um, and, and, and certainly working with BMG, the, the label, they're really into packaging. They're into, you know, putting out a really beautiful product. So anyways, so with the vinyl situation, the amount of songs uh, turned out that, you know, it would, ha it would have to be a two disc album, but with three sides, you know, um, a two disc project with three sides. So, so, uh, so then each song, you know, all the, and then it became kind of like a three act feel, you know, with, with, with each side having these four songs on it or so where, um, where uh, the mood was, was, would shift each time you flipped over the, over, over the record. So, so yeah, the first out, the first side is, is very much, and that has, you know, damsel in distress and trouble in paradise. Some of the early songs that have we've released um, those that's very much like Rufus is back in LA you know we're make, we're working and making in, pop music again and making pop music and you know working with Jim Keltner and 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 also younger people like Blake Mills and working but yet but yet going back to these great rooms like Ocean Way and Sound City and getting that kind of warm LA sound back um so that's sort of the triumphant return then you flip the side to the side two and then it's like then it, then it's like we've taken a little bit of acid let's say <laughs> and and we've gotten more into the you know psychedelic weird return of like the dandyish rufus you know this this more you know romantic character but that's still in these you know with these great players and these wonderful rooms and then and, and that's when kind of also mitchell room comes in more the producer and does some of his amazing stuff 
with keyboards and it's sort of more, it's just weirder. And then the third side you put on and it's completely dark. <laughs> and, and that actually ends with Alone Time, which is the song that we released uh, last week. And it's very, it's very kind of emotional and kind of sad and uh, with, with a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. But, um, but it's in, I, I kind of consider this whole album to be a bit of a trap. <laughs> like it's like, welcome to California. Then let's drop acid, and then you know we're going to be hung over. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and here comes Charles Manson. You're all going to yeah, die. Yeah, there you go. So, uh, <laughs> so it's it's, it's uh, but there's a little bit of hope at the end too. But but you know, like the la the songs on the on the last side, one of them is called Early Morning Madness, and that's about you know being horrified at four in the morning, and uh, as we often are, and then <laughs> and then uh, and I, then I remember those days. Yeah, yeah. Well, I thought they'd be over after I quit drinking, but they still occasionally crop up, pop up, and uh, and then and then there's a, another song which will be the single called "Hatred," very simply named "Hatred," which which. Uh, so it's an interesting record. Let me let me ask you one more question about the music. Um, in between uh, uh, the first time I met you, I think was probably twenty. 21 years ago, something like Probably, that. Probably, yeah, yeah. On your, on your first album. And um, you were a little bit of an enfant terrible at the time. Yeah, yes. And uh, uh, <laughs> how have you mellowed in the intervening, <laughs> in the intervening years? Yeah. Well, you know, I like to think of life in terms of a tree, you know, uh, in the sense that, you know, when I started... Um, yeah, I was this little sapling, <laughs> this sappy sapling who, uh, uh, snappy sappy sapling who, who, uh, you know, was really, a, a force of, of, of something, you know, I, 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 uh, yeah, I was a different person back then. Um, now when I'm older, uh, you know, uh, there's more branches there's you know there's a thicker trunk hopefully and but i can still see you know that little rufus <laughs> down near the bottom of the down near the ground uh kind of you know the, the, he still exists um i think you know and i think part of that whole concept for me has been to sort of accept who i was uh or and who i am but but but, but we will but we be willing to you know evolve into something else you know uh uh through through the years um and and uh you know i mean i you know being an alcoholic certainly is is a big uh part of that in the sense that i i can never forget you know that 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 person still exists within me you know and that and that and that that early rufus who was you know so reckless and so kind of arrogant also very you know inspired and and excited you know you know at the same time uh but but that engine is uh, is why i'm here today because i just had that drive um but that you know at, at a certain point i had to i couldn't you know fall prey to that you know uh i couldn't be a victim of of my own kind of enthusiasm <laughs> and uh and 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 had to you know shift gears a little bit and uh and so yeah, it's. I think it's about accepting, uh, but but also willing to, uh, you know, evolve. Let, let let me ask you this then very quickly. Um, uh, I don't think I've shared this with you before, but it's not something that I shy away from. I'm also an alcoholic and have been in yes, recovery yes. this time around for six years. Um, yeah, oh yeah, wonderful. And uh, one of the things that I feel that I've gained from this sobriety is. Um, uh, I think alcoholics and addicts are probably more ready for, for this kind of situation than a lot of oh, other yeah. people. Oh, yes, yes. Um, because we're used to living in the moment. Yes, yes. Um, but at the same time, I know there's also people out there struggling with this, you know, people yeah. who are locked up uh, alone. I mean, yeah. you're fortunate. You've got your husband. You've got your daughter yeah. with you. Yeah. Yeah. I have my partner with me and a dog. Yeah. Yeah. If I was a, an, an alcoholic or an addict and I was stuck at home with nobody, I think it might be a little tougher right now oh no it must be it must be it must be really hard um i will say though that yeah i mean i 
yeah, I, I don't, uh, I feel sorry for those. <laughs> I think it's actually hard for, for, for maybe those who, whether they're alcoholic or not, who just have alcohol as such a big part of their lives, which I think a lot of people just do. And now with all of this time and all of this uh, pressure and all of this fear, I mean, it's, 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 it, it must be a fucking <laughs> minefield out there. And just to not have booze in, in, and drugs in the, in the equation right now, it's just, it, it's, I think it's just really good in general. Yeah, I, I, I say to my friends who, who do still drink, yeah. like, you know, yeah. just, just don't go crazy because you, know, yeah. you, yeah. you need, your, you need yeah. your brain functioning a little yeah. bit. Let me ask yeah. you one last question before I let you go. And first of all, it's great to see you. Oh, um, great to see you too. Happy great to see your you. face. Um, what's the weirdest thing you found yourself doing in, uh, in quarantine, either with your, your family or just on your own? I mean, you haven't dyed your hair purple. I can see that. No, no. Um, but have you done anything like strange? What, the weirdest thing. Okay. Um, I would say probably the weirdest thing that I've done is actually, I have to, I have to, I have to the, the weirdest thing, it's, it's not that weird, but, but it's, but it is weird is that, you know, I have neglected my feet <laughs> for like ha! 15 years. So you have claws? <laughs> you have claws on your feet? Yeah, I have claws, I got the fungus, I got the, you know, the painful, you know, and I need a good, and my daughter especially is like, you have to soak your feet now. So I'm in the, I now have to deal with my feet, uh, whether it's <laughs> getting rid of the fungus or the, or the, you know, the, I don't know, there's just stuff going on with my feet that I, that I that now I kind of stare at. <laughs> yeah, well, now staring now, at my feet finally for a few hours a day is is starting to sink in. Now, now's <laughs> the time to um, to train your daughter to give you a pedicure. I think. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> your toenails painted. So, so um, if somebody wants to check out the the quarantines, how do they do that? Yeah, well, I do it on Instagram. So Instagram Live. So, right. so that's so where I do it. I think Instagram I think now. later they they post it on Facebook and stuff, but. Uh, yeah, it's on Instagram. So, well, it's great to see you, man. T thanks for taking a moment. You too. Thank you. Thank hope you. And hope to see you somewhere in person soon. Actually, yes, it'll it'll yeah. happen. It'll we'll get happen. out there eventually. Yeah, great. It's nice to hear that. Uh, on the news last night, there was sort of uh, some some positive news news out of Oxford, England, about a about a about a vaccine, which I you know you can't put any hope in right now. But it was nice to see that Oxford's you know working hard. It was. I don't know. It was very heartening. <laughs> well, and so. again, as you mentioned, we're we're lucky we're in uh, in California. It could be a lot worse. Yes, you're right. You're right. All right, mate. Well, have a great rest okay. of your day. Okay. Okay. Thank you. you. Bye. Bye, mate.